Yeah. Yes, sir. Good morning. Yeah. We can good morning. Start. Yes, okay. Mm. Uh, good morning. Uh, right. Today we will have a case discussion on post bond contracture. The case will be presented by Dr. Ronit, who is a second year junior resident at IPGM and SSKM Hospital and now on district residency program at MR Bangur Hospital. And today our teacher will be uh, Dr. Kollan Das, who is Assistant Professor of Plastic Surgery at IPGM and SSKM Hospital. So, Ronit, uh, you can share yeah. your screen and start presenting. And I think you should present complete and then we'll discuss the case and uh, subsequent discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Including okay, the sir. history and examination. Okay, uh, sir. Please, please start. Good morning, respected professors, my seniors, and my colleagues. Uh, today I am presenting uh, a case presentation on post bond contracture. So, uh, the patient particulars, uh, Melinda, could you just go to the next slide? So, the patient particulars. Go, patient back, particulars. go back, go back. Yeah. Next. So, uh, my patient, Mrs. Hosima Das, is a 35-year-old married uh, homemaker uh, hailing from Cal Kolkata. And she presented to me with a chief complaint of excessive postbone uh, scarring at the lower part of chin, anterior and lateral surface of neck and upper chest for last one year. Restriction of neck movements with inability to look up and difficulty in closing the mouth. So coming to the history of present illness, present patient was apparently well 16 months back when she suffered an accidental stroke flame burn injury over lower face, neck, and upper chest. There was no history of strider, respiratory distress, voice change, dysphagia at time of sustaining burn. Patient was admitted in a local private hospital. Burn was classified as a deep partial thickness burn, occupying 10% total body surface area. And treatment was started. Uh, it was managed conservatively with regular dressings and antibiotics. There was no history of splintage, massage therapy, and physiotherapy. No history of any airway intervention. Wound healed completely with scar tissues over lower part of chin, anterior and lateral aspect of neck, and upper chest four months after injury. Uh, uh, scar tissues gradually thickened with associated progressive restriction of neck movements, inability to look up, and diminished rotation of the neck. She also developed difficulty in closing her mouth, associated with difficulty in chewing food, drinking liquids, rolling of saliva from angle of mouth, and difficulty in speaking properly. There is also a history of weight loss over the last one year, and no history of itching over scar. Coming to past history, no known comorbidity, no history of surgery, no major illness, no history of exposure to TB. Uh, personal history, she is married for last two years, no child, mixed diet, she takes mixed diet, her bowel, bladder, sleep, appetite, all are within normal limits, there are no history of addiction, and no known allergy to any food or medications. Uh, in family history, there is nothing significant in her family. And by treatment history, I have already discussed by the treatment she received or the pawn injury she had. And currently, she is not on any medication. Coming to general service health, uh, patient is conscious, alert, cooperative, oriented to time, place, and person. Karnovsky score of 80. BLT is average, BMI 19 kg per meter square. Hydration is adequate, phasis is normal, decubitus of choice, no pallor, cyanosis, edema, jaundice, clubbing, engorged neck vein, or palpable limb nodes. Next slide, Dada. Vital signs, pulse is 72 beats per minute, regular in rhythm, normal volume, arterial wall not taken, no radioradial or radiopemoral delay, no special characteristics, by palpable in all the peripheral by locations. BP is 110 by 72 millimeter mercury as measured in left by arm. Uh, respiratory rate is 14 per minute, regular. Abdominal thoracic uh, patient is active by that present. And on by head to toe examination, patient has a, also has a hypertrophic scar over helix of both ears, and possible donor sites are normal. Next slide. So coming to local examination, first starting with inspection after proper, it was by examination was done with proper consent in a well lit room with proper exposure and in presence of a female attendant. 
Asymmetry of face and chest was noted with right nostril and right side of angle of mouth at a slightly lower level than left side and right nipple at an upper higher level than left. Approximately 13 to 15 centimeter hypertrophic irregular shaped scar with few hypopigmented patches noted over lower part of chin, anterior and lateral aspect of neck and upper chest with no associated ulcer or sinus. Next slide. Extent of scar. Superiorly, the scar extended till the angle of mandible and lower edge of body of mandible. Inferiorly, till 5 cm above the level of the nipple. Laterally, left mid clavicular line up to the right anterior axillary line. And posteriorly, the line between angle of mandible and mid clavicular line. Next. Neck is slightly flexed forward at an angle of 10 degrees from coronal plate from coronal plane at resting position. All range of motion decreased except forward flexion. Extension active and passive is till 5 degrees. Flexion forward is normal, left lateral 10 degrees, right lateral 15 degrees, rotation 30 degrees in both directions. And mouth opening with one centimeter gap in between lips at midline, lower lips everted, saliva stain seen at right angle of mouth, and oral hygiene poor with erosion and discoloration of teeth, and the supracalcular regions of both sides were visible. Palpation, size and extent of scar confirmed by palpation. Scar is non-tender, euthermic, rest above the skin surface. It does not blanch on pressure and it is supple in consistency with induration towards the margin. And also there is a thin band which is less than two finger breadth of the patient's finger. Uh, systemic examination, grossly uh, within normal limits, uh, CVS, uh, respiratory system, CNS, abdomen, cranium, spine, all within normal limits. Uh, so to summarize, uh, my patient is a 35-year-old lady who sustained accidental stroke flame injury 16 months back involving the lower part of chin, anterior and lateral surface of neck and upper chest for which she was admitted in a hospital and treated with anti antibiotics and regular dressing but without splintage physiotherapy following which her wound healed with scarring which gradually thickened with progressive limitation of neck movements, she also developed difficulty in chewing food and drinking liquids and rolling of saliva from angle of mouth and difficulty in speaking properly. Next slide, please. Tada. On examination, a 13 to 15 centimeters non tender, euthermic, non blanching, hypertrophic, irregular shaped scalpel scar with few hyperpigmented patches and induration towards margin <clears> noted <throat> over lower part of chin anterior and lateral aspect of neck and upper chest with no associated ulcer or sinus, asymmetry of face and chest noted with grouping of right angle of mouth and higher right sided nipple. Neck is slightly flexed with diminished extension and rotation. Lips cannot be opposed with saliva stain at right angle of mouth and systemic examination essentially normal. So my provisional diagnosis is this is a case of post bond contracture involving the face, neck and chest in a 35 year old lady. Yes, okay, you, uh, Dr. Rani, thank you. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, have a picture of the clinical case which you have described? Uh, no, sir, I do not have a picture, sir. Okay. So, uh, the history is of uh, accidental flame burns. Yes, uh, sir. To the, to the lower facial area as well as the neck and the chest. Yes, sir. Yes. So, uh, did you uh, examine uh, the neck movements? Yes, I have examined the neck movement and uh, neck flexion, forward flexion is very normal, but extension is well restricted as well as uh, the left, right, left and right flexion and rotation is also restricted, sir. So apart from the restriction of neck movement, what are the complaints or what are the daily problems the patient is uh, having? So by patient is by uh, unable due to evolution of lips, sir, patient is unable to eat or drink properly. There is constant drooling of saliva from angle of her mouth and there is also difficulty in speech because she cannot oppose her uh, mouth. 
एपोजल लिप्स क्लोज हर माउथ इफेक्टिवली क्लोज हर माउथ इफेक्टिवली ओके सो सो दीज प्रॉब्लम शी इज फेसिंग डेली सो इन दिस केस योर डायग्नोसिस इज पोस्ट बर्न कॉन्ट्रेक्चर ऑफ द नेक विच इज सिक्सटीन मंथ ड्यूरेशन हैविंग डिफिकल्टी इन ईटिंग एंड स्पीकिंग इफेक्टिवली Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, in this case, what uh, what will you plan? What uh, what do you think is necessary in this patient? Uh, how will you? If you had got the patient in uh, suppose say one week or within first three to four days, what was the important thing which you should have done? Sir, by uh firstly i would have classified it as a uh by superficial or deep burn injury uh if superficial burn injury uh mm. or type a burn injury then i would have treated with by uh, antibiotics as well as by dressing mm. and by ironic and ironic what is your impression is the history is too flame burn so what yes, do you sir, think it is uh, a it should be which degree of burn Sir, it's a by deep burn injury, uh, and also, sir, by from the history given to me, the discharge paper provided by the patient from the previous hospital, it is a deep by um, deep partial my thickness burn injury, sir. So, sir, I was asking you what would have been done properly in the first admission. You said antibiotics dressing is okay. What else? Yes, sir. Sir, by proper splintage, by was necessary, and by also with that by massage therapy and physiotherapy, and uh, proper immobilization. Sir. No, no, no. Deep burn only this may not be adequate. Sir, by if there was by necrotic dead tissue, then debridement uh, would have been necessary, and with debridement we should have gone for by uh, early. By resurfacing of the wound with either a split thickness skin graft or a flap, sir. Okay. Okay. So you, if you had seen the patient early, you would have uh, constituted splintage in the primary treatment and physiotherapy in the primary treatment and regular assessment of wound and early skin grafting. If you had thought that the wound is not healing. so yes. what are the degrees what are the degrees of the burn which we see uh, the uh, what are the categories of burn which we see in the uh, in a patient who has suffered from burn injuries sir by uh, according to degree sir it my it can be by first degree which is involving only the uh, epidermis dermis and superficial part of dermis the papillary dermis the second degree burn which is involving till the reticular dermis the by third degree burn which is involving also the subcutaneous tissue and the fourth degree burn which involves the skin subcutaneous tissue and also variably the uh, very deep structures like muscle tendons and even bones so now so it may be epidermal burns like kitchen burns which heals typically within 3 to 4 days it may be more than that that is uh, superficial partial thickness burns which yes, heals sir. by if not infected by 7 to 10 days yes, and sir. then we have the deep uh, uh, partial, partial thickness, thickness burns and uh, yeah and then we have the uh, full thickness burns full thickness burns uh, yes, so this how will you classify how clinically how will you identify uh, the the degree of burn uh, in the bed side sir by epidermal burns will be present only as by painful by painful reddening without any blister formation with intact by uh, cutaneous sensation sir uh, with intact pain sensation uh, sir superficial partial thickness burns will have blisters which are by thin walled and by there will be by blanching of the skin on pressure and by pain sensations will be intact sir it will be a painful by scar painful by injury uh, sir by deep partial thickness burn will have uh, uh, blisters but more thick walled uh, the skin will not blanch on pressure what uh, is that called, called as thick skin what is that called as 
color, the tissue which is dead, overlying. Sir, sir mot mottling, sir. That, that is escar. Escar, sir. Okay, sir. And, uh, uh, and uh, that is reduced by pain sensation. And in deep by burn, there will be uh, no by blister formation, by, there will be no pain sensation, and by, by the by tissue will be uh, totally so uh, devitalized. Okay, so there will be additionally uh, less pain and leathery appearance, and uh, there may be subcutaneous, visible subcutaneous thrombosed veins which will indicate that these are deep uh, or deep dermal or full thickness burns. Yes, okay. So uh, while treating these type of patients, uh, apart when they come to emergency, since your patient has only 10, suffered from only 10% of burns, do you, what is the primary management of acute burns? Sir, by... Initially, firstly, to, sir, I'll have to uh, uh, prevent further injury because it is a less than 10% total body surface area burn. We will not be consider a fluid therapy unless patient is dehydrated. So at and what uh, percentage of burn does the burn uh, therapy or the IV fluid resuscitation a burn fluid resuscitation is necessary. Sir, usually for adults, 15% total body surface area burn uh, is considered the criteria to start uh, IV fluid therapy, sir. And in children? Sir, in children, 10% total body surface area should uh, be considered the criteria. So this is necessary because of the anticipated fluid shift which occurs after a after a burn injury, especially a flame burn injury. So 10 10 percent. Yes, we can uh, in various textbooks it is written differently. So in uh, adults it is usually considered to be more than twenty percent, and in children it is considered to be more than ten percent of burn burn sustained uh, by the victim, and uh, yes. hence they need admission and IV fluid resuscitation. But so yes, in, Ronit, Ronit. In a patient like yes, this, there's not a facial burn. There's yes, sir. We'll have to rule out patient, inhalation or injury. No, inhalation plus this patient may not be able to take that amount of fluid orally also. So you have to consider the area yes, of burn also. Okay, you see the deep burns in this area. Patient has facial yes, burn, leaf burn. <laughs> so they may not be able to take adequate fluid orally. In that case, you might need to supplement. Because you have a peripheral burn of 10% is not a concern. But yes, patient burn in this area might require some fluid therapy. Yes, yes sir. Right. Yes, sir. So uh, next is uh, uh, what splint will you use? What the splintage which you have uh, mentioned about? Uh, sir, by I'll use uh, sir by thermoplast uh, uh, bless sir. thermoplast. <laughs> Thermoplastic splint. Thermoplastic splint, sir. Okay. Now, in our wards, what are available? What do we use for splintage? Sir, by colors, like, sir, uh, Philadelphia colors, sir. Right. Philadelphia colors as well as uh, plaster of Paris uh, slabs, which you can uh, make as a cast by padding it well. Uh, and the cast yes, should extend and the spleen should extend from both the year above from <clears throat> both the years that is the, from the mastoid lower chin that is the lower jawline uh, comes to the neck and uh, so goes uh, laterally uh, up to the lateral part of the neck and below it should cross the clavicle and should put the neck in a extended position that is the cervical spine in 15 degrees extension so that the patient does not have problem looking down and the patient should uh, uh, wear this splint in most part of the day except during dressing or uh, when the patient is taking bath or yes. when they are when the patient is having physiotherapy so yes. you can in increase the splint gradually as the patient tolerates so uh, slab is easier to use 
because you can do another slab after say seven days and uh, this will let the tissues uh, heal in a favorable position than what has happened in this patient. And Ronnie, yes. a doctor Das has asked you, what is the initial management of burn? You have not touched the word ATLS. Yes, burn so. is a trauma. So if it is the initial management, you should talk of I you have to always yes. ATLS management because this yes, patient sir. has got a risk of uh, airway injury. So you have yes. to ensure airway, breathing, circulation. This part is yes, important. Sir. Because if the initial question is initial management of burn, this should be as less protocol. Burn also same protocol. Okay. Yes, Next. sir. Carry on. So what are the various uh, methods uh, of deal, uh, treating a burn um, contracture? Can, can, you differ, can you give an idea about uh, how a contracture develops uh, particularly in this patient? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. By, after uh, by deep burn, such as this uh, deep partial thickness burn, uh, the by skin by, will heal uh, with development of granulation tissue and then fibrosis uh, because there is, uh, if there is no early resurfacing, uh, it will not heal by epithelialization but by fibrosis. And fibrous tissue will by, uh, by later contract, which will lead to a, a, contract, a contract chest. So, uh, so when uh, there is healing, the he what are the uh, steps of uh, uh, wound healing? So, uh, initially, sir, there is inflammation, uh, okay. followed by sir neutrophil. By by neutrophil will by come in the wound, and then it is replaced by some macrophages. And but there is after inflammation. Of what is the second stage? Sir, what uh, you are describing? What then yeah. goes in and what starts happening? Sir, neutrophils by they change to what? The neutrophil and macro changes to what? They start laying something. Uh, sir, laying fibro fibroblasts, yes. sir. Yes. That yes, sir. Uh, then, sir, the fibroblasts will be divide to form the uh, fibrocytes and the by collagen. And, collagen. sir, what collagen, collagen deposition? Sir, initially, it's sir, by collagen by type 4, sir. And type 4, are you sure? Mature or immature collagen? Sir, initially, immature collagen, sir. Oh. Then, and then, sir, it will mature with contraction. Yeah. Oh, sorry, so, sir, uh, not before. I think it was collagen type 3, sir. Type 3. Type 3 is abundant yes. in an immature scar. When yes, the wound sir. is healing, hmm. yes, sir. So, uh, so uh, first is inflammation, which usually occurs in most of the wounds normally. Then is proliferation, what you are what yes, you are telling. Then is the modeling phase, and finally the remodeling phase. So the problem yes, occurs in the modeling and the remodeling modeling phase because there is deposition of abnormal collagen, and when there is uh, a non-healing part of the wound, it can happen in any traumatic wound also. But especially yes, in burn, uh, it occurs in a very uh, exuberant manner. That is the fibroblast, which is a uh, which is a which is a cell which occurs in the uh, later stages of proliferation. It gradually takes over the wound, and there is deposition of abnormal collagen, and not only the type but also the pattern, which leads to a higher amount of fibroblast in the wound. And this leads to uh, effect of contraction so that the wound tries to heal itself and there is uh, migration of the epithelium uh, but the migration uh, happens at the cost of uh, a higher amount of fibrocytes or uh, fibroblasts and hence there is thickening of the wound and uh, thickening of the dermis you know, more than normal. There is loss of uh, the usual apototic uh, uh, barriers, the usual cell signal, uh, cell death signals, and there is exuberant pattern of growth of tissues, which leads to uh, this hypertrophic scar. 
the final entity is the hypertrophic scar. Uh, initially, it is initially it is immature and later it matures. So, how will you identify clinically an immature scar uh, from a mature scar? Yes, sir. Uh, there are certain points, sir. Uh, mature scar uh, will not uh, blanch uh, on okay. pressure. It is usually minimal. Or, there is usually minimal or no tenderness. Uh, usually okay. itching. Itching is absent. It becomes supple in consistency. Uh, and uh, mm, wow. So sure. immature scar will be tender. Uh, what what yes, will sir. be the color? It will be more sort of uh, reddish, more reddish, reddish pinkish. Sir. Yes, more pinkish, reddish. Yes, so sir. it will be tender. It will be reddish. And yes, what sir. what about what about the itchiness? Which scar will be itchy? Sir, by immature scar will be itchy, immature. Sir. So it will be pruritic. Patient will complain of pruritus. Mm -hmm. uh, cannot a, a, unable to sleep at night. Always uh, having disturbance. And then what you have told is. Yes, sir, consistency. Another sir. Point. Hmm, what yes. consistency? Sir, in, by immature will be indurated while uh, mature will become supple, sir. Supple. Soft, supple. Right, right. And uh, the immature will have blanching uh, yes, in the in the major part or in the central part, it will have blanching, whereas the mature scar will not. So mature yes, scar is an indication that the scar is settling down. This inflammatory remodeling process. The, that is the wound healing remodeling process that is settling down gradually. So, uh, yes, what is the importance of mature or immature scar in your surgical planning? And what is the time? At what? And what time, is the timing? At what time you feel that scar is matured and you can do a further intervention? Because early intervention is not uh, desirable because the the wound might have not have gone to the consolidation phase. What is the time usually? We consider. Sir, sir, usually by a scar will mature by one year, six months yes. to one year. Maximum yes. by is the usual time that you allow the scar to get matured. And then yes. the next question. Sir, what was the question, sir? Dr. Das asked you that. Uh, uh, what was the question, Dr. Das? You asked. Sir, I asked uh, that what is the importance of uh, mature uh, yeah. and immature scar in planning your yes. surgical yes. treatment? Yes. Yes, sir. But, sir, by uh, if the by, if we plan a surgery before the scar by matures, then there will be uh, further chance of recontracture uh, following by following sir, resurfacing surgery, sir. So uh, we assess the uh, maturation of scar and the contracture, and then we plan surgical treatment. Uh, because number one, what you have mentioned is there is always chance that the scar will bounce back and there will be recontracture if we operate in an immature scar. And also uh, uh, operating in immature scar will lead to more hemorrhage, more anticipated blood loss and difficulty in uh, resurfacing the wound, less amount of graft tape, uh, all will be unfavorable uh, unless we uh, operate on a mature scar. What is the exception to this rule? When do we release contractures early? Yes. Uh, say in two months, three months, five months. Sir, by when it is sir, by causing significant difficulty, uh, of life, sir, but like a patient is uh, totally unable to take food, or uh, uh, because of the contract, severe contracture, patient is unable to uh, uh, respire by properly. Then, sir, we should okay. consider for so uh, conditions where there will be a difficulty in carrying on vital functions, like suppose uh, eye eyelid contractures, ectropions. Okay, upper eyelid contracture leading to exposure of the cornea, leading to corneal uh, uh, problems like uh, resulting in uh, cornea, corneal redness, resulting in haziness. So in those, in that case, because of the fear of loss of uh, either temporary or permanent loss of eyesight, we have to operate early. Patient cannot breathe because of nostril contracture. Patient cannot take 
orally there is microstomia that is the mouth opening is less uh, in those cases you have to release so that the patient can take adequately also uh, if the patient has bilateral popliteal contracture popliteal lower leg knee contracture patient cannot walk effectively that is also a relative indication where we can do early release of uh, burn contracture and uh, subsequent treatment so neck is also in in the intermediate part where we have to release it early because of the problems of feeding problems of speaking these are also important function for our daily activities so neck also uh, we should not wait uh, till the scar matures sometimes the scar never matures because of the tensile forces working and uh, neck is in the junction of the head and the body so it always moves while we do any activity even in walking it moves so we have to release it early so uh, in this case what is your plan of uh, uh, treatment in your particular case sir by uh, after sir by preoperative investigation sir baseline investigations uh, chest x ray ecg and uh, x ray uh, neck ap and lateral view i uh, will plan for sir, why do you want to do uh, x ray of the neck what is your idea of uh, doing sir by to rule out any cervical vertebral by cervical vertebral injury or by, uh, cause of deformity being in the cervical vertebra sir to rule that out so what are the uh, gradations of post burn contracture of the neck uh, why are gradations important suppose uh, sir, uh, in your case you have told it is 10 degree flexion no it is 10 degree yes, flexion from the uh, coronal plane by coronal plane yes, sir. Yes, sir. so whatever if it is the severe uh, burn contracture what would have been different uh, in your clinical findings sir by grades of by neck contractures was given by sir by dr achar and by it there was are various my... classifications one of the classification is by Doctor Osher, yes. Yes. Ah, uh, by according to his classification, it was mild, moderate, severe, and extensive. Mild was sir less than one third of the by anterior aspect of neck. Ah, uh, less than one third of the circumference. A moderate was by one third to two third of the by anterior aspect. Ah, uh, severe was more than two third, and by extensive was there was a mentosternal addition. and also there is another classification sir by that is the uh, where there is a no, that, yeah we can uh, stick to any classification uh, because mm-hmm. ultimately we have to treat the uh, severity of the neck contracture so in this case i will uh, consider it as a moderate neck contracture because there are more yes. functional problems than uh, uh, what we are finding clinically so uh, in this patient uh, we mm, think that it is uh, important that we relieve the uh, burn contracture uh, and we go for resurfacing uh, resurfacing yes. uh, in your clinical uh, uh, examination in your systemic examination you have not mentioned about the donor areas though it is only involving the no yes uh, mentioned initi- Oh, okay. Okay. I, I, okay. I have mentioned, sir, in the general survey head to toe examination, I have mentioned, sir. Okay. Okay. I missed it. Sorry. So, in this case, we will be planning for a surgical release. What are the types of uh, uh, surgical approaches to burn contractures, to uh, scars? What are the uh, two major headings under which we release burn scars? Sir. Uh, in in this case i will go for a incision and release of the incisional scar. release yes yes sir and uh, if the scar was small i could have directly gone for a z plasty uh, especially in case of uh, limb uh, limb injuries sir and uh, after incision and release by i could go for also the excision of the uh, scar area if i feel that there is enough uh, 
there uh, that i can graft i i have enough graft to resurface the entire wound sir okay so in this patient you will be planning a incisional release so uh, ex excisional release which is the other type of release where you excise most of the um, completely or most of the burn uh, affected scar tissue as well as the contracture is done yes, in sir. cases where the definitely uh, the scar is small affecting a very important part like the lower eyelids like the angle of the mouths uh, uh, and also where there it is cosmetically important to take out the burn scar because burn scar also apart from having contracture has hypopigmentation uh, dispigmentation uh, even hyperpigmentation so if it is cosmetically uh, less uh, uh, disfiguring we can go for incisional release so how will you assess how much skin graft is necessary uh, sir uh, i can uh, do it uh, preoperatively and uh, yeah preoperatively that is sir, what preoperatively uh, sir preoperatively i can calculate the apparent by uh, defect size uh, by measuring with the by area in a percent of similar bit and uh, and uh, it will be sir by uh, from the uh, uh, mentum in the upper aspect uh, laterally sir by, to the angle of mandible on both so sides and will compare, uh, uh, the patient uh, sorry to interrupt you will be uh, you have to compare the patient with a similar built patient and take a measurement from the uh, fixed bony points so in neck we yes, have sir. to consider the mentum that is the midline uh, then yes, the sir. angle of the jaw then the mastoid and below yes, the acromion the clavicular and that area which is uh, affected you have to mark it uh, from the affected area to this fixed bony points and get an idea about how much a surface area you need to cover after you release your scar completely so the initially uh, this if you do it in this uh, same patient it will be a wrong measurement because this is the apparent defect which we see but if you compare it with a since uh, the, the, this patient uh, if you compare it with a, a lady or, or or a similarly built individual you can get an idea of the true defect Yes, so this true defect you need to resurface so that amount of skin must be available or that amount of tissue must be taken to resurface this wound yes sir. so uh, what we were talking about was the x ray so the x ray of the neck is done in cases of severe deformities where we are expecting uh, an aberrant uh, tracheal shadow that is either uh, a lateralized tracheal shadow or a tracheal shadow which is not linear so a soft tissue augmentation of x ray of the neck is necessary uh, what anesthesia will you plan for this uh, operation for this surgery or or, sir, or what is the anesthetic challenge in this patient sir by because of the flexion of the neck and inability to extend the neck the by intubation will be very difficult, difficult sir in this case okay. mm -hmm. and if we no endotracheal intubation by normal means is not possible then by the anesthetist can go for fiber optic uh, by fiber uh, intubation oh. with the will the anesthetist give relaxation and try will the anesthetist give relaxation and try or they try some other ways right uh, ंड and even if uh, that fails then uh, they can ask for uh, the uh, release of the uh, no, next next uh, to the endoscopy if this is a without endoscopy the other maneuver they That's can right. 
and the next step would be endoscopic intubation two yes, bronchoscopy sir. and then fiber op you yes, don't sir. have this the next is what you are talking of yes sir under local anesthesia by and by mild sedation patient can be by the incision and by release can be given and afterwards by patient can be intubated also okay so we try for uh, uh, awake intubation and if awake intubation is not successful and fiber optic intubation is available we will go for a fiber optic intubation Uh, securing of airway and uh, if neither if successful or these are not available then after prior consent uh, or to the uh, bail out in a dire situation we can do a release of the scar only the release only release incision uh, given a, in the where will you give the incision suppose sure. there is a Why? long scar extending from the uh, chin to the chest a uh, long scar quite broad scar so where will you give the incision sir point of maximum tension sir okay so you extend try to extend the neck and uh, you feel the scar and you uh, uh, assess clinically where there is maximum tension and you release the scar uh, transversely uh, so that the uh, uh, the cervical spine extends that is the head extends and the airway becomes more uh, available and becomes more accessible to the anesthesiologist at the head of the table and after intubation and then you take the normal steps like the um, antiseptic dressing and pre and pre prepping and then we go for the final release and taking out of the scar so x ray uh, uh, apart from assessing uh, the tracheal shadow in this case suppose there is a contracture of the elbow in 30 degrees flexion of the elbow joint what is the importance of x ray in that situation in a post burn contracture sir uh, to rule out because any... contracture because contracture by definition is uh, uh, what what happens what the burn scar does to the joint or near mobile anatomic structures like the neck where there are multiple joints so what x ray what role does it play in uh, what role does it have in uh, assessing other joints suppose say elbow which i have given you an example and to rule out any bony uh, bony pathology sir bony pathology or joint pathology uh, like, or which uh, sir suppose by, it is a long standing contracture suppose 10 years contracture so you are suggest in a uh, a growing age group so there may be joint uh, changes what you are suggesting this no what i understand from you yes sir yes sir what your sir, Sub, post, suppose there are finger joint contract uh, there is electric burn contracture post electric burn contracture of the index finger Uh, joints like PIP joint, so you can rule out any change of joint, permanent change that is ankylosis. What you are telling, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So by post fracture, sir, the bones can uh, heal by if no. What is myositis ossificans? The, sir, myositis ossificans is by ossification of the. by uh, tendons and by muscles sir which might be cause contraction and by deformity sir Fixed so myositis yeah so myositis ossification uh, ossificans is a uh, heterotopic ossification isn't it yes sir and yes, it is sir. Uh, fortunately it is very rare but in a rare case also in severe contracture of the joints it should be ruled out the x ray has got a role of ruling out uh, this myositis ossificans because that can lead to more uh, difficulty in achieving your goal uh, the goal of uh, reconstruction of the joint or going back to the normal that can be severely impaired and there may be lot of hemorrhage uh, during the release as well as post uh, surgery so um, uh, by doing x ray we can rule out permanent or temporary changes in the joints like subluxation like ankylosis fibrosis or bony as well as myositis ossificans especially where the joint is surrounded by muscles too many muscles like elbow joints like shoulder joints all these cases we have to do x ray
Yes. So uh, you have done your investigation and uh, anesthesia has been done and you have done an incisional release. And uh, so what is your plan of uh, after you release? What are the structures you will release? Sir, by, I will go update the platysma, sir. And then uh, I will assess whether the platysma is also my contracted or if there is severe addition, then I would also release the platysma. And by even after that, if there is no return of adequate range of motion, then I would go for fish telling of the by ends of the uh, uh, incision and uh, and so what is the role uh, of uh, fish telling of the uh, incision? Sir, what is the telling will importance? Prevent, sir, yes. it prevents a linear by, by linear scar contracture, sir. Yes. So if you release only in a single line and you do not break that line, it has again got the potential. Uh, if there is some graft loss, unfortunately, uh, especially in the ages. Uh, the age of your release, uh, if there is graft loss and, and there is secondary contracture forces, then again, this effect of uh, recontracture or uh, recurrence of contracture can happen. So in that case, you have to uh, always uh, think about uh, prevention of recontracture and hence we break the scar at the ends by the fish tailing. Like a tail of a fish, we uh, go in an oblique manner from the horizontal manner or at the edge of your incision. And this prevents the picture frame effect. That is, uh, it decreases the recontracture rate and hence uh, the recurrence of the contracture. So after you release the skin, uh, the abnormal scar, you go to the dermis, you release it, and then you identify the uh, platysma, which is a what is platysma? Sir, sir, subcutaneous muscle. Yeah, so it is a muscle which is present in within the skin. Yes, so uh, this platysma you release uh, up to, you release the whole part of the platysma and then you go to what structure? After the platysma, sir, what does? Sir, the uh, uh, deep which cervical layer? Which layer? Sir, uh, sir, uh, investing layer, sir. Investing layer, yes. Okay. Then you release this uh, fascial layer and you expose the neck muscles. Muscle. Uh, yes, the, the neck muscles uh, midline as well as laterally. And you uh, start your incision uh, uh, from the anterior border of one side of sternomastoid to other side of sternomastoid uh, in the most uh, tense part of the scar. Mm, and then you gradually extend it towards the mastoid as well as towards the uh, clavicle in the inferior direction on both sides. And you gradually extend the neck and the neck is extended in the table and uh, the movement is uh, seen that how much movement can be achieved and uh, you gradually remove the scar as you go. Yes. So, what will be the coverage uh, after this? How will you plan your coverage? What graft will you take? Sir, by, I will by, go for a sir, by split thickness skin graft, but by, uh, at least intermediate or by thick uh, split thickness skin graft. Uh, because my, sir, my full thickness skin graft will, by, by, will so not number be one, you will go for a and, you will go for a split thickness skin graft. So, what yes, are the sir. components of uh, a split because, thickness skin uh, graft? Sir, by split thickness skin graft, we'll have the sir, epidermis and superficial uh, dermis. Sir. So, epidermis and part of the dermis. So, yes, uh, in case of full thickness skin graft, we take epidermis as well as the whole of the dermis. Yes, sir. So, in this case, we will take only the, uh, we, since the area is large, suppose say about 13 to uh, 25 centimeter, we will take the skin uh, in, uh, in a partial thickness manner, that is 
so we will take uh, the epidermis and part of the dermis so yes. another way is uh, thinking is that whether we will need sheet grafts or we will take mesh grafts what will you do in this case sir i will avoid meshing as much as possible uh, because meshing by will again cause recon fracture uh but however if we adequate coverage cannot be achieved without meshing then i will uh, use mesh uh, use meshing but the meshing should be in a direction which is parallel to the uh, skin crease sir. so in this case after release and hemostasis an adequate uh, amount of extension which is uh, which you have achieved you will give sh uh, sheet uh, partial thickness grafts okay and uh, ideally it should okay. it shouldn't be perforated it should never be meshed it shouldn't be perforated but we will do some perforations by our scalpel uh, to allow release of uh, any tissue fluid or any small hematomas which may happen below the skin graft so what are the techniques of uh, fixation of skin graft into the wound uh, uh... Sir, by I sir minimal trauma. Minimal trauma. Sir, minimal, 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 Yes, if it is available, yes, then fibrin glue okay. is one of the ideal choices uh, to fix the skin graft to the bed. And uh, yes. uh, in this case, since your bed is only the uh, subcutaneous tissue as well as muscle, it will be a good be uh, bed. So you can uh, just uh, lay the skin over that or otherwise you can do some small quilting. What is quilting suture? Sir. Have you heard the term quilting? Uh, sir, I don't know, sir. I haven't, sir. When you fix the skin graft to the underlying bed by suturing in a uh, in a uh, regular interval, like uh, what we see in our quilts, what we use in the uh, during the winter season. Ah. Uh, yes. Oh, this is Bangla lep bolle. Leper modde je shelai gulo thake. Jate kushan ta. In that, yes, that manner, you can do uh, suturing of the skin graft into the bed. And there is another yes. thing called the uh, tie over suture. What, what is the tie over suture? So, tie over suture, there is or a tie long... over dressing for that matter. Uh, a long end is kept at both sides and a bolster dressing or dressing is by placed over the uh, graft and by uh, the by ties are, uh, and the long ends of the suture are tied over the dressing so that there is a fixation of the dressing tightly over the uh, grafted area and minimal uh, movement of the uh, recently resurfaced. Yes. So area. the most important thing is the area where we are grafting or we are doing a skin graft uh, should have minimum movement. We should not allow too much movement there. Uh, so in order to prevent too much movement, we will do an immobilization. That immobilization can be done by asking the asking the patient to strictly remain immobilized in bed in a uh, in a situation which may the patient may feel uncomfortable so hence to reduce this uh, uh, pain of pain or trauma of the patient we can ask her we can do a uh, tie over suture or bolster dressing so that the skin graft remains steadily uh, stuck into the uh, bed in which we have applied so, for okay. how long? Uh, what is the usual duration of take of split thickness skin graft? So, 21 days, sir. No, uh, the take. When do you do the first dressing? When do you assess oh, sir, that your skin graft has taken where you have intended to? Sir, by 4 to 5 days, sir. So, we usually do dressing uh, after 4 to 5 days. 
in a situation where we have given a split thickness skin graft. Full thickness skin graft, when do you do the first dressing? That I don't know, sir. About uh, 9 to 10 days. Just double of what we do in split thickness skin graft. So split thickness skin graft is taken through stages. The stage of imbibation where the graft is nourished by only tissue fluid. Then uh, revascularization, which happens from three to five days when new, new vessels, new epidermal vessels gets connected from the tissue bed to the skin graft. Okay. Then uh, it gradually, after the graft is taken by this uh, new vessel, then we can be assured that this skin graft will gradually mature what you are telling about three weeks, four weeks time. It will gradually fill up the whole defect by migration, uh, by uh, uh, contact inhibition into the edge, all these things will happen. So for four, yep. first four to five days, we have to provide an immobilization, a partial immobilization by uh, resting the patient in a uh, strict position by doing bolster dressing. So bolster dressing is done to immobilize the skin graft into the bed as much as possible. Apart from that, you can give... Yes. Uh, 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 POP slabs, uh, plaster of Paris slabs in the neck to maintain the neck in a, a desired position of extension. What about the donor side? Do you do dressing of the donor side? Yes, uh, by donor side should, should be by uh, kept by the initial dressing should be done and kept for 21 days. Sir. Yes, because in split thickness skin graft, the donor side heals on its own. That yes, is, why, why does it heal on its own? If you sir, take a partial sir, thickness by, graft? Sir, since by majority of the dermis is by kept intact, sir, it will heal by epithelialization. So what unit is responsible for this epithelialization? What is the growing, uh, what are the layers of epidermis? Sir, uh, uh, five layers of epidermis. Yes. Sir. So, which is sir, the most important the, layer in epidermis? The stratum basal, sir. That is the by the dividing. Malpigian, the Malpigian layer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, hmm. uh, this regenerative keratinocytes, keratinocytes that are restricted to this layer. Sir. Okay. Dermis yes, does sir. not have any regenerative potential. So, yes, leaving sir. behind dermis is not important. Okay. Yes, so, sir. what we leave behind is pylosebaceous units. The pylosebaceous yes, units, sir. there is a hair follicles. So, yes, the hair follicles left behind go, has got keratinocytes. So, the, yes, those sir. keratinocytes gradually migrate, uh, gradually proliferate and migrate and cause a pattern like a secondary healing. Yes, sir. Okay. So the yes. donor site heals by 14 days if it is a deep partial thickness uh, uh, skin graft. If you are taking a, uh, a thick uh, split thickness skin graft, it heals by 14 days. If you are taking a thin split thickness skin graft, that is 0 0.0016 of an inch uh, skin graft. That is quite thin, which can be taken. What is the instrument used for uh, harvesting skin graft? What is the name? A humbi's knife. A humbi's okay. knife. A, a yes. modified humbi's knife. Yes, oh, so it can take split thickness skin graft, a thin as well as thick. So thin split thickness skin graft, uh, the donor site heals by 10, 10 days. Just like a uh, superficial partial thickness barn. Yes, okay. Yes. So any a thicker graft takes 14 to 21 days. So we will open the donor side dressing at 14, 14 days, assess it and provide the necessary treatment. Yes, sir. So in post-operative period, after your skin, uh, your wound has uh, resurfaced, what are the, uh, the therapies which you will give in this patient? Sir, by uh, physiotherapy, sir, massage therapy. So, uh, do a, uh, do a sp uh, split thickness skin graft have sensation? Mm, yes, sir, it will. 
Sensation, no, no, it won't have sensation. Sensation is very late to happen. It may happen in the ages after two years. Okay, suppose okay, one sir. year, two years duration. So there is insensate okay, skin. This is an okay. insensate, insensate skin, and the quality of the skin which we have in normal, uh, in unaffected areas, like uh, production of sebum, like production of lubricants, which happens normally in the skin, that does not happen. So it will be dry. So it okay, will sir. be a dry. It will be a dry, insensate skin. Okay. Yes. Sir. With no, with no sweating, with no sebum formation. So all these yes, things sir. have to be provided by providing lubrication, right. gradual, uh, uh, gradual and uh, regular lubrication, massaging, so that the scar matures earlier than what is uh, what is uh, usually found by applying gentle pressure in regular manner. you can give rise to earlier maturation and suppleness of scar can be achieved earlier and also strict yes, splintage splintage yes, is very much essential up to 6 months after the operation yes sir sir okay. i think this yes, concludes yes. yeah But, yes, no, complete coverage complete one should know this part burn burn you have to read for burn contractor primary management of burn Treatment of burn wound, treatment of burn shock, and then the measures to prevent contracture. And once contracture happens, timing of repair and assessment of patient and the management. It's a very good uh, discussion. Thank you, Dr. Das. Ronit, thank you, sir. Well. Very good. Thank, thank you, Ronit. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you.